Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and today we will be taking our first steps to getting some interactivity between the user and our window. The first thing we're going to do is create a custom class for our window. I'm just going to go ahead and call this my window. And here we go. Now before we start writing any code, let's think about this for a second. Like last time, we could add in a JFrame, set its parameters and add some other components on top of that. Since our class essentially behaves like a JFrame, however, it would make much more sense to treat it as such. So instead of adding a JFrame, we could just extend from it. Again, import it. And now we've got all the functionality that a JFrame does. Now what else does our window class have? We want our user to be able to interact with our program. And for that we're going to make use of a new class, the so-called JButton. We're also going to display some text that changes when you press the button. So these two things will be our extra data on top of the JFrame functionality. Now it's time to define our constructor. Now this is a great spot to initialize all the basic stuff like size, name and so on. Now just to reiterate, we have access to all these methods from the JFrame class because our custom class that we created is essentially a JFrame. Anyway, now it's time to decide on a layout. Last time we used the null layout for demonstrational purposes. But today we are going to use the flow layout. Now the flow layout is pretty simple to understand. It puts all the components that you add to the window in a row. The length of the row is determined by the window size. Once a row is full, it's going to start a new one. Since we're making use of a layout, we don't have to worry about setting up a location and a size for our components, so that's pretty nice. Now it's time to take care of our components. That's it for our label. And that's it for our button. That was pretty simple. Let's add these bad boys to our window and see how it looks. Before we can start though, we have to go back to our main method. Since this is where our program starts, we have to create an instance of my window right here. And that's all we have to do. So let's see how this looks. Here's our cool window. On the left side is our label with boring text and on the right side is our button. As you can see our flow layout takes care of all the necessary details for us. It gives our component a size and location and adds them together in a row. If we had added the button first and the label afterwards, we'd have the button on the left side and the label on the right side. Now let's see what happens when we click the button. Huh, it's not really doing anything. Well that would have been too easy, wouldn't it? Turns out, we have to tell our button what to do whenever a user clicks it. So let's take care of that. Before we do though, let me go over this line right here one more time. As you might have noticed, I didn't have to instantiate a concrete object of flow layout before putting it into this method. Usually we would have done it like this. This would give us the same result as before. We don't always have to instantiate a concrete object if we don't want to.
Doing it this way is called passing in an anonymous instance. Since it's anonymous and we don't have a name to refer to it, we won't have access to this instance ever again. But in the case of our flow layout, we don't need that. It takes care of everything we need by itself. Now let's get back to our button. There are two ways we can tell our button what to do whenever we click it. Both ways make use of a so-called action listener. What a listener does is it waits for certain events to happen. Those events could be anything from a mouse click to a push on the button of your keyboard. You can then write code that executes whenever that event has been triggered. Now there are many kinds of listeners, but the one we need right now is the action listener. Now this might be a little complicated if you're unfamiliar with the concept. In Java we not only have classes, but also something called interfaces. Now there are a couple of differences between a class and an interface, but all you need to know for now is that a class can implement an interface, which then adds more functionality to it. Our action listener is such an interface, so let's go ahead and implement that. Right after your class name, or the class name that you're extending from, you can write implements, which is a keyword, and then the name of the interface that you want to implement. Whenever you implement an interface, you will get a notification like this. There's one or more methods from this interface that we have to implement. Fortunately, there's a very quick way of doing this. Just go here and click Add Unimplemented Methods. And down here you will now see all the extra methods that you got from the interface. In the case of the action listener, it's just one. This method is called action performed. As a parameter it gets an action event, which we're interested in when we're checking our button. So now that our MyWindow class has the functionality of an action listener, we can tell our button to direct its events to this class. And here's how we do this. JButtons come with an addActionListener method. This method requires something that can process action events, meaning something where it is guaranteed that it has an action performed method. Now that MyWindow implements the ActionListener interface, it is guaranteed that this MyWindow class has this method. Because if you recall, we were forced to implement this method right here. So whenever we click our button now, it redirects this event to our MyWindow class, which we can handle right here. Now there's one thing we have to do first. We have to perform a check where our event came from. If you think in larger terms, we could have multiple buttons in our window, which all use our class as an action listener. If our action event, which is called E, gets source equals button, Then do something. And in our case, we simply want to change the text of our label. And thankfully now, we are done. So let's check this out. We click our button and our boring text changes to... You click the button! So yay, it worked. Now I know this was a lot to comprehend in just a single tutorial episode. We will be working with listeners in the future though, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. However, most things are learned by trial and error. But hey, this is all the time I have for this episode. If you want to keep track of what's happening on this channel, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial.